you see this bucket right here? This is a sample of how much water is used in America. It represents about 2,500 cubic meters a year. Now, this bucket right here, this is what we call water scarcity. Now, when you reach this level, compared to that level, that means you are stressed, you have to declare a state of emergency, you have to re revise your agriculture sector program, and you cannot wash your cars, and there's many, many programs that when you reach this level. Now, I know you're asking me, why is he telling us about America, scarcity? Well, I'm telling you because I want you to know how much water you, is used in Yemen. Well, the average person or the average available water for, in, in Yemen is about like this cup. Compared to these cups right here, this, that's the average available water. It's going to get worse. Why? Well, population. No one wants to control the population. In a nutshell, we use 95% less of what the average person uses in America. In the region, development is correlated with water use. When the economy gets better, people use more water. It's a natural phenomenon. Development is correlated to water. So at the stage we're in, we're going to develop. We're going to move up, and we're not turning back. You've got to consider water. Now, you can see the whole region. The whole region is actually using more water than, than is available. Although I left this country at a very small age, at about seven years old, I've been out of this country for more than 30 years. I still love it. It's my home. Isn't it beautiful? It's the home of my family, my friends. It's the home of beautiful, beautiful landscape. I'm actually really afraid for it. Why? Not because of political turmoil. It happens. It's a natural phenomenon. People fight, wars happen throughout history. I'm afraid because we're running out of water. We're running out of water. Where will we go? Where will 24 million people go? Now, do we really want to live like this? A lot of people nowadays live like this. Very large percentage of the Yemenis. A lot. This is not far from here, about three miles away. Hardship. Three o'clock in the morning when I was coming from the airport, I saw an image like this. I was struck. Now, this is planet Earth. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. 97% of the water is in the ocean. 2.5% is in a form of glaciers. It cannot be used. Now, we're left with half a percent that is available for use. Now, that half a percent is actually decreased even further as we pollute it. See this uh, circle right here? A ball of, just imagine when you're on a plane crossing continents, you see water and you think, well, why can't we do something about it? We could use desalination and pump it to the desert, to the Middle East, where, or the so-called Middle East, North Africa region. Now you see that big circle right there? Now if you put the water similar to the globe, similar to this, you'll get, it's a distance between Sana'a to Bahrain, Manama Bahrain. Now, that's the diameter of all the water that exists in the earth. Now see that little circle right in the back? That's how much water is available for human consumption. That's, that includes lakes, rivers, groundwater, everything. Now, if you look at the distance, it's about 170 miles. And it's actually a distance from Sana'a to Aden. That's it. If you put everything in a sphere like this, that's all the water you get in the earth. Now, Yemenis, we know how to conserve water. No one is better than us. We did this in civiliza civilization years ago. We, 
the West is learning from us. Everybody's learning conservation from us. In fact, see some of these conservation programs? We use it today in New York City. That's a constructed wetland right there. We divert water from parking lot and we create a nice pond. Those plants right there, they are meant to suck up the contaminants and the water is there for fish, to feed the groundwater. Now we also do this in streets, see, right there? The landscape of New York City is gonna change dramatically. Water goes in, you have the plant, the plant similar to over here, sunflowers. What they do is they suck up contaminant and water goes to groundwater and it feeds the groundwater. Now this is a pilot project that I was involved with. This is gonna be throughout the city. And where did we learn this? We learned it from civilization, from places like this. Now, when did sustainability end over here? I looked back and I researched 1980. That's when population just exploded. And the city of Sana'a back then was about 80,000. Now, it's more than two million. It cannot sustain. Something must be done. You know that the water basin in Taiz collapsed in 1998. Sana'a we used water times more than the water than we use in, uh, than we consume. Amran Basin and Sa'da Basin will follow, they'll collapse. There's no turning back. Population, the, if you look at the concentration of the population, it's areas where recharge zones of the water. We developed where springs is available. And with time, as population increased, Guess what happened? All those springs disappear. Now, for a while, we've been relying on oil, and it's about to be finished. That's about 70% of gross domestic product for the country. Now, the rest is mostly agriculture, which is approximately 17%. And we need to rely on that using this. Now, most of the population will end up doing agriculture. What will they do? Where, where will they go? Well, I know. After lunch, you said, well, how can we solve the problem? Should we build desalination plants and pump water to Sana'a? That's going to be the first city in the world to run out of water. Uh, I don't think so. According to my calculation on the latest energy cost, it's going to require just to, to pump water alone at least a quarter billion dollars. Forget about the infrastructure. You need at least six billion dollars. We cannot sustain that. No city can sustain that. Now, if you look at other cities in the region, it'll be the most expensive city to use desalination system. It cannot happen. solution. As I said earlier, the key to the whole equation is population control. Population has been increasing unstoppable, unregulated. The average population growth is above 3.0. Now I know if you, you think out of China, China's only growth population is 0.9. The world average, 1.1. No one is looking at these numbers. We really want to do policies for the country. We really got to look at those long numbers. Yeah, I know, I told you desalination is not going to work for here. But what we could do, very simple. Build desalination in coastal areas. Revitalize those areas. Macha was known for centuries. Aden, the port of Aden. We could use that place. We could actually develop it. It have one of the deepest ports in the world. Education, well, we really need to start putting some education in our curriculum about water resources because we're a desert town, we're a desert. How can we survive? Our kids need to know how to deal with that. We cannot escape it. Technology, well, technology has been proven to decrease water 
between 30 to 70 percent. We could look at, into that, but again, going back to population, no matter what we do, it's going to be an issue. Urban encroachment. For those of you who travel cities, you know, as a matter of fact, when I was a kid here, not so far from Hadda, it used to be a spring, uh, back in the 80s, it disappeared. Not far from here, they used to be, uh, they used to feed some of the agriculture land with uh, springs. They all disappear. Sana'a has gr grown sporadically. No urban development whatsoever. We need to diversify the economy. That's the key. Now, if you think that you're going to work with agriculture, you're wrong. That is insanity. What's insanity is when you keep on making a mistake over and over and over and getting the same result. So insanity, we cannot let that happen. Diversify the economy, as I said. We have so many mountains, so many minerals that we could really start developing. Look into that. I know, well, water lays in our social, economical, and natural system. Trends have shown that there's an increased demand of water. If we continue as usual, nothing will be left. Now you know what I know. I need your help to communicate the urgency to solve the water problem. How many generations of this country's history have had the opportunity to rise to a challenge, to challenge this water problem? We are the gener generation about which centuries from now will say they were the one that solved the water problem. Can we do that? Can we work together? Hey, you are the young. Thank you.